Hi, welcome to today's video. So today we are going to see how we can design our own production backend system. So I have developed this application where is my motivation and I have developed the Android application for this and the backend system for the same. So I will discuss what all components are required in order to create a production backend system. Okay? So this video we are going to consider how to think about the system design for such application. First I will show you that what this application contains and then we will figure out the things that we need to develop for our backend system. Okay? So this application is where is my motivation app. So this application first shows you the screen which has content generated by the users. So you can scroll this and this provides a paginated content for your application. So there are various other options also in the application. Okay? For example, we have something called mentors. So we will get the list of mentors that user subscribes to and then you will have this screen where subscription mentors will appear. So each mentor will have its biography and the content for that. Okay? There are various other features also. So basically this application requires a backend system where the users will get the content which they are generating among themselves. Okay? And also uh, this system will be personalized for that user. So now think about this. How should we think about the backend system that we need to develop for this? Okay? So now I will sketch down the very basic things from the, from the top perspective how should we categorize our system. Okay? So we will see it now. So now that we have seen the application that we have developed, so we will see that what all components we are required to think. Okay? So from a very macroscopic level, we have got three components. We have got client, we have got server and our development environment. Okay? So there are three major components you can think of for your system. Okay? So first is client. So who are the clients? So the client will be the Android app. Okay? Just I gave you a demonstration of the Android app for where is my motivation. Similarly, you can have your iOS applications. You can have web apps like website. You can have the dashboard that you can use to pump up data into your backend system or you would want to for example administer something in the backend system. So you can have the dashboard and you can also have the third party API services for example some other company wants to use your services okay wants to access your resources so for that you will have to create an APIs for those third party services. Okay? So first we have our client. So client is going to connect with our resources that is in our server. Okay? So what the server constitute of? Server will have two things. First is machine and the program. So machine is the physical device on which your program runs. Okay? So this machine, it can be your own machine. For example, you want to have a physical server at your own house, for example, or company, you can have that. Okay? And this machine may be running like Ubuntu server on that, for example, and you can access that machine for these clients. Okay? Or you can have virtual machines. What are the virtual machines? We generally do not want to install our own server because this server requires good bandwidth of internet and this requires the heat dissipation that happens because this machines are already always running so a lot of heat is dissipated. So in that case you will have to provide a very good cooling system. So that's why we generally prefer virtual machines. So these actually these are the server farms that are made available by the big players who manages the machine very well. So we use those services. Okay? So the 
Famous services, the popular services include AWS of Amazon, we have Google Compute Engine, okay, and we have Microsoft Azure, and there are various other vendors also which provide virtual machines. So, virtual machines act like a physical machine that we can access remotely and we can control this that what program is going to run on this virtual machines. Okay. So, for the server we have to understand how to control this machine. Okay. So, we will have to know that how to access this machine okay, and then how to manage the program. So, it will depend on the operating system. So, OS that you will use on this machine will depend on your familiarity and expertise. I generally use the Linux and in the Linux I generally prefer Ubuntu. You can also use for example Windows or an another for example Linux distribution you want. Okay. Now in the server in the machine you will have to run programs. So, these programs will be the server programs that will actually make this client communicate with the server. Okay. So, options for the program you have is the Node.js server, you can have Spring, Node.js is for the JavaScript, Spring uses Java or the Kotlin, Flask uses for example your Python, you have Golang now. Okay. So, you can develop your backend system, backend programs in any of the frameworks that you are familiar with. Okay. And the program is where we are going to write our logics. So, second part we have to think for our system is the server, what type of machine and what program we are going to use. Based on this, the third part is the development, how we are going to develop our systems, okay. how we are going to write our logics that how what client can ask to the program and what program will respond to. So, for that we need to focus on development. So, development we have to select a language that will depend on the framework. Okay. If I am choosing Node.js the language is for example, the JavaScript or you can use TypeScript also. I prefer TypeScript. Okay. And after deciding the language and framework and then the language, then you have to think about the version control. This is the very important part because you need to control that what incremental changes are happening in your code base and also simultaneously a lot of developers will be working on the same project. So, in order to resolve the conflicts that happen writing on the same file, you need a version control system. So, version control system we use git. Okay. In the git, the git servers that are famous in the public domain also are github. Okay. You have also gitlab, you have bitbucket for example and there are many other platform also where we can keep our code base and we can access it remotely and this is managed by the git version control. Okay. So, now suppose we choose github for our repository. So, then in the development we have defined our version control that we are going to use. Now, we need to connect to our server so that we can update this program and also manage the machine. For doing both of these things, we need to connect to our server okay? and this server is remote because we are using for example, AWS, Amazon Web Services, then we need to connect our for example, we have created a machine which is our for example, Ubuntu machine. So, we need to connect to that Ubuntu machine. For that, we need to use SSH connection. Okay? So, remotely we will connect to our server and we will command the server to run various programs on the machine and also to deploy new changes that we do in our development code base. Okay. So, now in the understanding of what components are required for creating this backend system for the production 
okay so i am emphasizing the production because we want to create the system that can scale okay so for that we saw that we need to define our client and we need to figure out where our server is going to be and then we have to define what development workflow we are going to adopt okay so after making all this decision next part i will show you that how should we think about each minute component that is going into this system so in the next video i'll show you that what components are required and how this comes look in the complete picture okay so for example the client is going to connect to the server what all programs are, are we using for the server and in the development also so i'll give you a map an overview of the various components so i'll see you in the next video so if you are new here uh, i'll request you subscribing to our channel so hit the subscribe button and also the bell button so that you will get our content fast delivered to you by the notification so i'll see you in the next video meanwhile keep smiling and keep learning thank you